Hello, in part 3 of the amplitude modulation, we will learn about modulation index. From the part 1, we know that amplitude modulated signal can be represented by EAM of T is nothing but Vc plus EMT into sin omega CT, where EMT is nothing but the information signal or message signal. Now let us consider the case of a low frequency sinusoidal wave information signal. So let us represent this EM of T by Vm sin omega mt. Now here omega m is the message signal or information frequency and omega c is nothing but the carrier signal frequency and the relation between them is omega c is greater than greater than omega m that is carrier frequency is very much higher than the information frequency now from this bracket if we take the vc outside so this equation becomes 1 plus vm over vc sin omega m t vc sin omega ct now here we get the term vm by vc so this vm by vc is called modulation index and it is denoted by small m so here vm is nothing but the peak of the information or message signal and vc is nothing but the peak of the carrier signal so modulation index is just a ratio of vm and vc now let us try to visualize the same here vc is nothing but the peak of the carrier signal so let us consider that this is a high frequency carrier signal and having a peak of vc so here you can see that from this figure peak is nothing but the 3 volt so here vc is nothing but the 3 similarly vm vm is nothing but the peak of the message signal or information signal so here this is a low frequency information signal having a peak which is equal to vm and its value is right now 1 volt so here vm is equals 1 now from the equation of am we already know that the bracket term which is nothing but the vc plus em of t is nothing but the peak amplitude of our am signal and we know that this peak amplitude is not a constant term because this depends upon em of t and em of t is a function of time so here we can see that the peak amplitude of the am signal is varying with respect to time so let us assume that our mass signal is nothing but the sinusoidal signal so let us replace this em of t by vm sin omega mt so this whole bracket term is nothing but the peak of our high frequency carrier signal now let us try to find out the maximum and minimum possible value of this bracket term now here we know that in this bracket we do have some sine term that is sine theta and we know that maximum and minimum value of this sine term is plus 1 and minus 1 so let us first try to estimate the minimum value of this bracket term so when sine will be minus 1 at that time we can say that this bracket will becomes vc plus vm into minus 1 which is equivalent to vc minus vm so we can say that the minimum value attained by this bracket term is nothing but the vc minus vm and that is called minimum peak of the am signal similarly when sine will be plus 1 at that time we can see that the bracket term will be vc plus vm into 1 which is nothing but the vc plus vm and that is nothing but the maximum value attained by the peak of the am signal so we do get the two terms that is minimum possible value of the peak and 
maximum possible value of the peak so now let us try to understand it visually so let us assume that this is our carrier signal which is unmodulated before modulation having a peak of vc and from this diagram we can see that vc peak is nothing but the 3 so vc is 3 in this case similarly let us assume that our low frequency information signal is having peak of vm and that value is nothing but the 1 so here we do have vc equal to 3 and vm equal to 1 so if this signal carrier signal is amplitude modulated then this one is the resultant am signal so here you can see that the amplitude of the carrier is changing with respect to time it is decreasing increasing and so on so amplitude is not a constant so if you want to find out the maximum and minimum value of the peak of the am signal then as we have find out that for sinusoidal case that is information is sinusoidal that minimum peak will be vc minus vm and maximum peak is vc plus vm so here we can see that the maximum value is vc plus vm and we got the vc equal to 3 and vm equal to 1 so it is 3 plus 1 is maximum value of the peak and minimum possible value of the peak is nothing but the vc minus vm which is nothing but 3 minus 1 which is 2 so here you can see that how we got the value of vc plus vm that is maximum value of the peak of the amplitude of carrier and minimum value of the peak of the amplitude of the carrier now since we know that if we connect these peaks by an imaginary dash line so that imaginary dash line is called envelope so you can see that this is nothing but vc plus vm is also called the peak of the envelope and that is maximum value of the envelope and vc minus vm is called minimum value of the envelope now here modulation index is nothing but the ratio of vm and vc where vm and vc are peak of information and carrier signal respectively now these both things are variable so let us try to guess the possible values of the modulation index so let us assume that case number one my numerator that is vm is less than vc that is my peak of the information signal is less than peak of the carrier so if vm is less than vc so obviously numerator is less than denominator you can say that modulation index is less than one and that case of am modulation is called under modulation now similarly if numerator and denominator are having the same value that is vm equal to vc at that time we will get modulation index m equal to 1 and that particular case of am is called perfect modulation or critical modulation at last if the peak of the information that is numerator is higher than the denominator that is if vm is greater than vc we can say that our modulation index will be greater than 1 and that particular case of am is called over modulation now let us see all three cases one by one graphically so case number one where vm is less than vc that is modulation index less than one under modulation so this is my unmodulated carrier signal having peak equals vc and its value is right now 3 so vc is 3 my information signal having peak is vm whose value is right now 1 so here vm is equal to 1 so first of all let us find out the modulation index which is ratio of vm over vc so this will be 1 over 3 which is nothing but the 0.33 so in my case in this particular case modulation index is 0.33 and if you say in terms of percentage then modulation depth is 33 percent because vm is less than vc we are getting the modulation index less than 1 because vm less than vc now what will be the maximum value of the peak and minimum value of the peak or that is maximum and minimum value of the envelope so maximum value will be vc plus vm that is 3 plus 1 which is 4 and minimum value of envelope will be vc minus vm which is nothing but 3 minus 1 which is 2 now case number 2 if vm is equal to vc so m equal to 1 and that particular case is called critical or perfect modulation 
so here my unmodulated carrier is oscillating with the peak value vc which is equal to 3 so vc equal to 3 and my information is having now peak equals 3 so peak of the information or message is vm is equal to 3 so here vm is 3 so if you if we try to find out the modulation index then it is vm over vc which is 3 by 3 which is 1 so modulation index is 1 or modulation depth is 100 percent so this is the case of perfect modulation so let us try to find out the maximum value of the peak of am signal and minimum value of the peak of the am signal so maximum value becomes vc plus vm which is 3 plus 3 which is 6 and minimum value becomes 3 minus 3 vc minus vm 3 minus 3 is 0 now case number three where vm is greater than vc we can say that our modulation index will be greater than one so here let us assume that once again unmodulated carrier which is oscillating with the peak value of vc which is equal to three so vc equal to three and my information signal is oscillating with the peak value vm which is nothing but equal to four so here vm equals 4. So if we put this Vc and Vm into this formula, so my modulation index become Vm by Vc equal to 3 by 4 by 3 which is 1.33 or modulation depth is called 1.33 percent. Now let us find out the maximum and minimum value of the envelope. So here you can see that maximum value of this envelope that is blue dash line maximum value of this envelope is Vc plus Vm which is nothing but the 3 plus 4 which is 7 and minimum value of this envelope is nothing but the vc minus vm which is 3 minus 4 which is minus 1 so here you can see that the minimum value of the envelope is a negative value now here we once again focus that in the case of under modulation where vm is less than vc and modulation index is less than 1 you can see that the minimum value of the envelope is vc minus vm and since vm is less than vc so you can say that this difference of vc minus vm will be always positive because vm is smaller than vc so this difference is always positive so you can say that this envelope or this amplitude all the amplitudes will be positive at any time now for case number two that is perfect modulation if vm is equal to vc and modulation index equal to 1 then we can say that the minimum value of envelope will be vc minus vm and since both are same so this difference will be 0 so you can say that the minimum value of the envelope will become 0 so in the case of perfect modulation where vm equal to vc you can say that your envelope this is this dash line will touch the 0 line now for the third case or over modulation case where vm is greater than vc that is peak of the information is greater than peak of the carrier your modulation index is greater than one in that case you can see that the minimum value of the peak of the envelope is nothing but the vc minus vm so since vc is less than vm so you will get this difference negative so you can see that this blue dash line which is envelope crosses this zero line crosses this zero line and reaches to the negative part so your vc minus vm becomes negative now since minimum value of the envelope crosses this zero line you can see that in this cycles after each positive cycle we have negative cycle after positive cycle we have negative cycle positive cycle negative cycle but over here you can see that after this positive cycle we do get another positive cycle since our envelope crosses the zero line so you can say that after positive we are not getting the negative cycle we are getting another positive cycle so this thing is call change in phase or also call phase reversal which is not in the case of previous two case we can see that in under modulation after each positive cycle we get the negative cycle so this is nothing but the continuation of the phase similarly in perfect modulation 
phase continuity is there that is after each positive cycle we get the negative cycle but in the case of over modulation we do not get this phase due continuity and this phenomena is called phase reversal which is the case of over modulation so here we can say that if we want to avoid the phase reversal and if you want to perform easy demodulation of the am signal over modulation is generally avoided so we can say that modulation index m is kept less than 1 now or in another sense we can also say that modulation depth is kept less than 100% so most of the time under modulation is used look perfect modulation is also not used here now we already know that modulation index is nothing but the ratio of vm over vc but if we don't know vc or if we don't know vm is there any way to find out the modulation index so answer is yes so let us assume that we received one am signal so this is nothing but the received am signal and this blue dash line is nothing but the envelope so if you know the maximum value of the envelope if you know the minimum value of the envelope then we can also find out the modulation index so let us say that the maximum value of this envelope is e a m max minimum value of the envelope which is called e a m min so if we know the maximum value of the envelope of a m if we know the minimum value of the envelope of a m then we can get the modulation index via this equation which is e m x minus e m min divided by e m x plus e m min now the thing is what recall we already learned that the maximum value of the peak attained by the a m signal is nothing but the v c plus v m minimum value of the peak attained by the envelope or a m signal is v c minus v m so e m max is representing v c plus v m and e a m min is nothing but representing v c minus v m so if we put this values of e a m max equal to this and e a m min equal to this into this formula then we get m equals v c plus v m minus v c minus v m and v c plus v m plus v c minus v m now if we solve it out you will get 2 times v m in numerator and 2 times v c in denominator and as a result you will get the same thing which is nothing but the vm by vc so here we can say that if you don't know the value of vm and vc individually yes you don't know the value of vc and vm individually still you can find out the modulation index if you know what is the maximum value of the peak of the envelope of the am signal and what is the minimum value of the peak of the envelope of am signal then using this formula you can find out the modulation index so here we completed the modulation index so in summary in this part we learn what is modulation index it is ratio of vm by vc where vm is peak of information signal vc is a peak of a carrier signal now modulation index if it is represented in percentage then it is also called modulation depth in, order, in am modulation we have gone through three different cases of modulation under modulation perfect modulation over modulation in under modulation modulation index is less than one in perfect modulation modulation index is equals one and in over modulation m is greater than one and yes phase reversal occurs in a over modulation so this is generally avoided and at last we also learn that if you don't know vc and vm individually you can still find out the modulation index by just observing the maximum value of the peak of an envelope and minimum value of the peak of an envelope and use this formula you can still find out the modulation index m thank you